You are royalty. These young brothers right here, these are gods on the earth. But you can't be a god and a nigga. You gotta decide. You gotta decide, I'm gonna be a nigga or I'm gonna be God. That is a decision that we have to make. That is the decision and what we have to teach our young men. They hate that the prophets are back teaching our people the truth. We are the Israelites according to the Bible. That's right. That is who we are. You know why men, black men kill each other? Because they don't see each other as Jesus Christ. We are Israelites on the time of the Jews. Let's go to Hebrews uh, 7 and 14. So we're in society, and we're wondering when we send our prayers up, sometimes we think, oh, I prayed on this, and the Lord blessed me with it. I'm going to hit you with something. A lot of times we say, I prayed, and God gave this, God blessed me with this thing. You better remember, Satan has the power to give too. Remember, when Christ was fasting and up on that mountain, what did Satan tell him? He said, bow before me, and all that you see, I'll give to you. Because God gave him the power to give as well. Sometimes it ain't God blessing you. Because you're breaking the commandments of God, Satan will bless you. As long as you're outside of the commandments of God, Satan has the power to continue to give to you. Read that. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 8. Come on. Again, the devil taketh them up into a, in a high exceeding mountain and showed them all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou will fall down and worship me. So, that's the thing we have to take into account. Just because Satan ain't come to you personally and say, hey, sis, you know the Lord, the day, the, uh, the day is uh, not the Lord's Sabbath day. Won't you go on down there and get you some popcorn and some water? You all right? He ain't going to kill you. Well, that's what he, that's what he told Eve. He, he told Eve, oh, no. Surely you, surely you ain't gonna die. Right. God knows that in that day you become like gods. What did Eve say? Really? Right. Let me take a little something off of this off of this tree right here. Let me see what's going on. We have to remember that Satan can cause us to continue to break God's laws. Right. Now before y'all go, I want to hit you with a law. Y'all ain't gonna play track. Y'all ain't gonna run, right? It's a, it's a law. How many people seen Murray Pope? Raise your hand. Y'all seen Murray? Y'all used to watch Murray, right? So when Murray say. In the case of little John John, brother, you are not the father. What the woman do? You are not. She's a runner, she's a track star. She gon' run away when it gets hard. Run, bitch, run! She can't take the pain, she can't get scarred. She hurt any- Ah! They run, right? So when I read this, don't run. <laughs> don't run. This is a law that we must understand, we, we gotta understand the law. Our, our sisters and our brothers in today's time, we must understand that this was this is a law given to us that we gotta keep. It's one of the main laws that'll keep brothers from lusting, that'll keep brothers from raping, that'll keep our women from being the victims of such crimes. Let's read this. Yes. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse five. Yeah. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What are we talking about here? We're talking about the clothing, right? We're talking about articles of clothing. Now, granted, remember what I said. I know you didn't know this and understood it because if you understood it and you believed it, then you wouldn't do it. So I know you didn't know it. So it is my job as a teacher of these scriptures to edify you so that you do know. After today, you can't say, well, God, I didn't know. Because God going to say, whoop, whoop. remember that day right there? Uh, 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 they just told you. You didn't listen, did you? Read that again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Come on. Sure. Neither shall a woman a man put on a woman's garment. I got a question. What is a woman's garment that you shouldn't wear, brother? What else? Yeah, you should be never wear that. A what? Sister, this your this your, this your husband. He worked hard, don't he? If he came home from work one day with a dress on, what would you say? Huh? 
You're going to say, what's wrong with you? That's what God is saying. God said, brother, don't put on no dress. I made those and those are designed for who? For women. So now, what do women wear today that be pertain and belong to men? There you go. Suits? Tie? What else? What? What? That's right. Pants. Pants were never given to the sisters. But what happened in the, what, 1950s, early 1950s, 20s or something like that? You had a lady named uh, Susan Amelia Bloomer. That's where bloomers come from. Y'all heard of bloomers? That's where the name bloomers come from. Bloomers were, were, were designed during this time because the women, they wanted equal rights with the men. Right. During this time, the women, if you go back to the 1920s, you see all women with dresses. That's right. But during the 1920s, they had the women's rights movement that sprung up. The women wanted to be equal to the men. So what did they do? They went and bought pants, not you women, you followed after, the so-called white woman. That's who did it. She wanted to be, she wanted her equal rights with, with her man that was out working hard all day long. So what did she do? She went to the store, got her a couple of her friends, and they put on pants and went to walking down the street. How did you say you would look at him if he came home in a dress? That's how the men during that time were looking at the women like, what the hell? Yeah, what the yeah. hell you got on pants? Why are you wearing pants? Right. They did it as a sign to signify that they are just as strong and they can do the work that men do. But God said what? Read it again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Come on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Come on. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, what is an abomination? So we want to establish the fact that women shouldn't wear pants, men shouldn't wear dresses. That is something that our enemy, remember we read that? That is something that our enemy has used as a tool against us. They've made it and weaponized it so that now, normally the person that wears the pants in the house, what do you say? Who wear the pants in the house? The man. But not today. Today, the woman is like, I wear the pants in this dang on house. You better, nope. you, be, you better. It puts a spirit on our women. You see what I'm saying? It puts a, it puts a masculine spirit on them. Nope. And that is why God said they're not to wear that. And all that do so are what? Are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. What is an abomination? So a man in a dress is an abomination, and a woman in a dress is an abomination. What is an abomination? A disgrace. Good. Anybody else? Let's see what God. Let's see how God puts it. Give me the one in Jeremiah. Yeah, give me the one in Jeremiah because we don't want to be an abomination because God don't like an abomination. He said, "All that do this thing, they are abominable unto me." Read that. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter forty-four, verse four. How be it? I sent you all my servants. The prophets. God said, "What?" I sent you all my servants, the prophets. We are the servants, the prophets of God. He said, I sent you my servants, the prophets. Come on. Rising early. And we, we rise up early on the Sabbath morning, every Sabbath, to come and teach our people that you're the greatest people on the earth. That this Bible is your book. It don't belong to nobody else but you. God sent us to do this thing. Read. And sending them saying. Saying what? Oh, do not this abominable thing that I hate. God said, don't do the abominable thing that he hates. So we should understand that if God says cross-dressing is an abomination, we shouldn't do it. Because here's a question that y'all can answer. If you're on the highway, you're driving, and let's say you're going to New California. It's a long ride, right? You're driving. That's like two days. I ain't never doing that. But if you drive to California, along the way, you got to tinkle. You got to pee. It's, 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 like, it's to the point where you can't hold it. You find a quick stop. Boom, you get off, you run in the bath, you run to the end of the quick stop. When you get into the quick stop, you're going to stop at the door. What are you looking for? Bring it up. What are you looking for? Sign for your gender. You looking for what? Sign for your gender. The sign for your gender. So what sign are you looking for? Female. What does the female have on? A dress. Really? Oh. Really? The female has on a what? A dress? Really? So somebody knows that in order for women, men and women to identify themselves correctly, you can use clothing that identifies what restroom you go in. That's, That's right. right. Because you got on a zipper, what you, gonna, what, what you gonna pull out? You ain't pulling nothing out. You gotta take it all the way. Because God, I'm gonna show you something. Get in Timothy. Get in Timothy real quick. Because God gave y'all princesses a royal dress code. And you must understand that. You are royalty. 
These young brothers right here, these are gods on the earth. But you can't be a god and a nigga. You got to decide. You got to decide. I'm going to be a nigga or I'm going to be God. That is a decision that we have to make. That is the decision and what we have to teach our young men. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. God say right quick. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. God said adorn yourselves in modest apparel. Remember a minute ago I said you want to be married? You want to be married? What you going to wear on, your, on the day that you get married? You want to wear what? Why? Why are you going to wear a dress that day? Because on that day you're going to be the most prettiest. The most beautifulest, I just made that up, beautifulest. The most beautifulest woman on the planet. Ain't nobody gonna be able to touch you on that day. Why you can't be that every day? That's why that can't be the, why can't our women feel like that every day? Bring because society has taught us that you ain't nothing. Society has made us, has beat us down to a pulp where we happily accept being a nigga. Having the cheapest, the lowest class stuff that, that, that's available to us. When God said, you're a princess. You are real, like, you might, it might, understand the words coming out of my mouth. You are a real princess. I don't know how to make you feel it, but I'm telling you, God put something in you that he ain't put in no other woman on the earth. Right. Don't no other woman, can't no other woman flip their hair and do what they do like you. Can't no other woman style their facial features and look as beautiful as you on this earth. Nobody can do it. He only gave that to you black women. He didn't give that to no, give that to no, other, no other, other women. The same thing he did for the black man. You put us in anything, we dominate. We dominate basketball. We dominate football. We dominate golf. I don't even ski, but I guarantee you, if you show me, we'll dominate that too. That's right. Because God put it in our, uh, gave us the ability to be gods on the earth. God said, women, adorn yourselves in modest apparel. Come on. With shamefacedness. With shamefacedness. And sobriety. And sobriety means being sober. Don't nobody want no drunk woman oh, talking trash. Don't do that. Read. Not with braided hair Come on. or gold or pearls or costly array. Read on. But which becometh women professing godliness. Women professing godliness. Why? Because God put it in you to be like men unto the God that he made to put on the earth. The black man. That's you're right. his help me. You're, his, you, you're the one that he comes home. He has to say, when you go home, you don't have a stressful day. What you say? Baby, I, I, I just, I, I just want to chill out today. Look, it's been a hard day. You that pillow of rest that God made you. I know y'all got to go by appreciate y'all time. But listen, what we got to realize is that we are the greatest people. And in order for us to come back to being what God put in us to be, we got to do what? Remember. Don't go nowhere. I, I, I got something to tell y'all. Where y'all going? No, going to the car. You see that? You don't want to know. I said, do you want to be a God or a nigga? They don't want to know how to be God. Because we already niggas. That's why we're on the bottom of society. So I got a question. Look on your flyer. Look on the back of it. I got a question. So when you're looking at the flyer, there's tribal names on there. On one side, yeah, on one side right here, on this side is what God calls you. On this side is what America calls you. Or the name that we've picked up in America since being here. Which one would you be on this side? Number one, Judah, because you are what your father is. Give me that in numbers. You are what, this is how we, first give me that in Job 8 and 8. Let me show you something. Because what we got to realize is that we've been lied to so bad. And we've been running with these lies for all these years. We've been running with lies, thinking we all right. No, we not all right. That's why today we're still shot down in the street. But read that in Job. It's the book of Job, chapter 8, verse 8. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. And prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. 
So we know we came in as our people came in as slaves, right? But we have not diligently prepared ourselves to search out our fathers. Why? Because when we do the research of our fathers and we get all the way back to them slave ships, now we got to question ourselves. Well, who were we before the slave ships? Who were those people? Bring now, society teaches us that Africans sold Africans, but that's not true. Right. Africans didn't sell Africans. Africans sold Israelites. That's right. Remember when I was going over the flyer? I mean, over, over this, about how they separated the land? So, during 70 AD, when Jerusalem was ransacked by Titus and Vespasian, our people in the land of Jerusalem at the time, let's get the prophecy. I'm going to show you something. Give me that in Luke. We ran from Jerusalem down to the deeper parts of Africa because they were killing us. We are the real Jews. The people that you go, right. that you can see over there now, they're not the Jews. They don't even call themselves Jews. What do they call themselves? Jewish. They ain't gonna say, they ain't gonna say I'm a Jew. Cause a Jew is, are you black? They say I'm Jewish, meaning I'm something like a Jew. They're like, what's your name again? Rick. Rick. If I say Rick, yeah, I'll be there, I'll be there around there around five-ish. I'll be to your house around five-ish. No, that means I ain't coming exactly. I'm coming something like or something around. So when they say they're Jewish, they're saying I'm something like a Jew because I'm co I converted to their religion. I'm Jewish, not a Jew. Or I'm, they don't say I'm an Israelite. They say I'm a what? Israeli. Right. That ain't in the Bible. What you, what they, they make up and take stuff. We're going to show you that's what they did. So what I got you on? Luke, one, read, Luke 21, read that. It's the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 20. How did we get into Africa? Read. And when ye shall see Jerusalem. See who? Jerusalem. This is Christ speaking. He says, when you see Jerusalem, come pass with armies. What army? That was the Roman army, 70 AD, Titus and Vespasian. They ransacked Jerusalem, put borders around it, and killed millions of us. The blood, was, that, when you read the book of Josephus, Josephus describes the scene as blood flowing down the street. The blood was up to that high in the street because they killed millions of us. So Christ told us what? Read it again. And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Know that the destruction is nigh. The destruction of what? All of the curses that we broke, of the laws that we broke, God had to bring the curses upon us because we broke the commandments. Remember, the Most High God is a just God. And he is going to do what he says he's going to do. He told us if we break the commandments, you are going into slavery. This was the slavery and the punishment, or parts of the slavery and the punishment that happened to us. So he said, know that the destruction of Jerusalem is nigh when you see the uh, army compassed around it. That was the Roman army. Read. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. He said, if you're in Judea, flee to the mountains. Now you notice that Jerusalem is northeast. So they fled into what mountains? The same mountains that Joseph fled into when Christ was born. That's right. Why did he run? Why? Why? So most of our people think Christ is uh, is a white man. If Christ was a white man and he was f f or running from uh, who was it, Herod? Right. He was running from Herod at the time. If he fled into the mountains during that time, which was the land of Africa, if he was white, would he blend in? No, hell no. They'd be like, there you go, right there. All these black people out here, there you go, right there. They could just snatch him up and bring him back. Herod could have killed him. So it made sense when he told when, when the angel told Joseph to flee into the mountain. You got that? Read it. The book of Matthew, chapter 2, verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. And flee into where? And flee into Egypt. What color are the people in Egypt? Bring it out. They were black. So, if Christ and Joseph and Mary were white, why would, now that fleek to flee meaning what? I'm running from something. So if I'm running from something, why, and I'm white, why am I gonna flee to a black land? You can see me. You can see them. They can't hide. You can see them. So if he was a so-called white man, why would he flee into a land of black people to hide? You up. ain't hiding over here, boy. We, we see you, you're right there, hell. You don't look like us, you, you, you look like that. So. When we go back to Luke 21, and Christ said to do what? And when ye see Jerusalem, when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Uh -huh. 
and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. So he told y'all, he told us to flee to the mountains, and if you're in there, you better run out. Because what? And let not them that are that are in the countries enter therein too. He said, if you and if you ain't in the country at that time, don't go back in there. Why? For these be the days of vengeance. These are the days of vengeance. What vengeance? The vengeance that God said he will put these curses on us for breaking his commandments. Read on. That all things which are written may be fulfilled. That all things that were written may be fulfilled. What was written? It was written back here in Deuteronomy if we broke the commandments. So now we fled into uh, deeper parts of Africa fleeing Roman persecution. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.